Seven things Battlefield 1 got wrong. With the release of the final DLC for the game, Apocalypse, I think the time is right now to pick out some of the more prominent missteps of Battlefield 1 so they can be learned from for the next title, of course, Battlefield 2018. These are of course just my own thoughts and opinions, so it'd be great to get yours down below in the comments section. And I'll follow up this video with a list of things that Battlefield 1 got right as well, to offer a fair and balanced point of view. Okay then, here we go. These points are listed in no particular order, they're just points I jotted down the other day and felt were ones that stood out most of all. So number one, the first thing I think Battlefield 1 got wrong, premium and the switch to a live service model. Battlefield 1 launched with a premium season pass. This advertised four DLCs being released over a period after the launch of the game and would need to be purchased by players to access that content or players could buy the DLC separately. Just after the launch of the French DLC, however, they shall not pass, DICE and EA chose to accelerate Battlefield 1's update cycle, delivering changes and bug fixes alongside new content every single month. At the time, this was celebrated by the community, as I think we all saw this as new content coming faster. And it did deliver on that, with lots of Frontlines maps being added alongside all the DLCs, various new level 10 weapons being added, but I think it led the community to be not as interested in the new content. The entire DLC release schedule was kind of thrown out of the window for Battlefield 1, and it was very slapdash. For example, after the French DLC launched, it took another six months for a fully-fledged DLC to arrive. That was the Russian DLC, it was bundled with more content than usual, but then that could have been easily split into two updates to give more content during that six-month wait. Then we had Turning Tides Part 1 arriving just two months later, earlier than people expected, and then the second part just a month after that, when I don't think many people expected a standard sized DLC with four maps to really be split up at all. And finally, Apocalypse launched just 30 days after the second update for Turning Tides, a full DLC, but this time with countless bugs, issues, and according to the community and myself, some underwhelming content. There was no structure or continuity to the update system after the French DLC, and I think that left players quite confused as to what was really going on. In my opinion, the game either needed to launch as a live service game, where we knew updates would be coming every single month, or really it should have stuck to its older three-month update system. The change mid-cycle confused a lot of players, and from a player's perspective, it kind of looked like admittance to the mistake of launching Battlefield 1 with a premium season pass. It's really not a popular system anymore, and a live service game, I think, would have been well received had that been at the launch of Battlefield 1, not six months later. The second thing I think Battlefield 1 got wrong is the Conquest game mode and the way it was changed from previous Battlefield games. Now, in Battlefield 1, getting kills and holding flags scores points towards that 1,000 point target that you need to reach for your team to win. The number of flags you hold gives your team that many points, and this occurs for both teams at the same time. Also, each flag has a different start and end time for awarding the point for holding it based on when it was captured, rather than syncing all flags across the map to award points at the same time. Kills count one point towards the total. In previous Battlefield games, things were quite different. First of all, the score counted down to zero rather than up to 1,000. Each kill your team recorded reduced the enemy team's score by one, and the team holding a majority of the flags would bleed away the other team's score as well. And this created a tug of war, essentially. Say your team held three flags and the enemy team held two, you would bleed the enemy team's score down closer to zero faster than what the enemy team could do to you. 
they could only reduce your score by recording kills against your team. Essentially, flag ownership was much, much more important as only one team could affect the score by holding flags. If the other team then took one of your flags and they held the majority, suddenly your team's score would start ticking down a little bit faster. It led to much, much closer and more frantic finishes to balanced games of conquest. It also increased the importance of reviving dead players and staying alive. If a medic revived you, you'd regain a point back towards your team's score. Battlefield 1 system, I think, encouraged far too much attacking gameplay and put no emphasis whatsoever on defending flags, because both teams were earning points for the flags they held at that time. If you held more flags, you'd score more points, so there was little point trying to defend anything if you didn't have the right amount of flags held. The previous system worked 90% of the time, and I don't think anybody was really calling for Conquest to be changed, so it was really changed for the sake of change. And if it goes back to the previous system, I'd be much happier. The third thing I think Battlefield 1 missed the mark on is weapon customization. To move from Battlefield 4, where the number of possible combinations of attachments for a single weapon was just extreme, to Battlefield 1, where customization was almost completely removed in favour of a variant system, was quite jarring. Sure, in Battlefield 1, you can still switch to a different model of Iron Sight on some of the weapons, you can attach a bayonet and a couple of other things, but the player doesn't have the control that they used to have. That control was taken away and replaced with variants which were developer decided. One benefit of this system is that players couldn't set up a weapon attachment that counteracted something else they've applied to their weapon, as many people did in Battlefield 4, but customization is a big part of Battlefield titles, and having the system almost completely removed was a detriment to the game, I think. Weapon skins became a bigger focus of customization in Battlefield 1, but having those almost completely replace the freedom that we had in previous titles wasn't the greatest step. Number four on my list of things that I think Battlefield 1 got wrong is randomization, and I'm specifically talking about like the reward system, the battle packs, the medals and things like that. In the beginning, when the game first released, I wasn't too bothered that unlocking new weapon skins and melee weapons was controlled by a random system, but as the game moved on, it became increasingly frustrating. With each new DLC added, more items are being added to the battle packs and mixed in with all the other DLC offerings as well, which means the chances of you getting the skin you actually want for a single weapon is lower every single time a content update is added to Battlefield 1. There are at least 7 weapon skins per weapon in each DLC and more melee puzzle pieces coming in every time. There are 4 DLC packs and there's an extra set of skins called the Night Operations Pack as well, and of course you've got all the base game weapon skins too. All of these items are randomly handed out when you open battle packs, meaning the player has absolutely no control or direction of their progression in Battlefield 1 when it comes to cosmetics. I know there are some people that simply don't care for cosmetics in the game, and that's totally fine, this doesn't really apply to you, but I like to collect as much as I can in video games, and Battlefield 1 doesn't offer me a satisfying route to do that. There are so many skins, I'm still yet to obtain most of them, and I don't think I'll have gotten all of them by the time the next game launches either. If I had control of the game, I'd be scrapping the random battle pack system and replacing them with a series of daily, weekly and monthly assignments that give all players a chance to work towards the rewards that they really want to unlock. Number five on my list, we've got to talk about rental servers and custom games. Rental servers weren't even a thing at the launch of Battlefield 1. DICE decided to completely revolutionise the way they were going to handle third-party rentals of servers, and that annoyed a lot of small communities and clans. They couldn't host their own experiences in the game or have dedicated clan servers for their members, at least at the launch. Then, when the system did launch, it only came with extremely limited functionality, a far cry from the Procon level of control that many PC communities have been using in previous titles. And still to this day, it doesn't have the same level of features as what Battlefield 4 had on PC with Procon. 
and I'd say that's kind of an embarrassment to the franchise, which in previous games has had great support for community-run servers. This kind of feature needed to be a priority for the development team, and I am confident the lacklustre support for community-run servers and the really strange priorities that different RSP rules and switches were given to be implemented into the game in updates is a big reason why so many smaller communities simply stopped playing Battlefield 1, maybe they stopped playing Battlefield altogether, or they went back to Battlefield 4. I'm hoping for the future Battlefield titles that RSP is focused on and handled a lot better than it was in Battlefield 1. And then there's custom games. They died a death due to almost zero support and advertising from the development team. Battlefield 1 has a front-end UI that's perfect for advertising new game mode and map combinations, or mutated games just with different rule sets. And nothing was done to give the community a reason to go and play custom games. I can see the idea behind the feature, I totally get that, but if you don't advertise it or even update the feature for nearly a year, you might as well remove all mentions of it from the game. Another thing I think Battlefield 1 really missed the target on was player progression and by extension I want to talk about specialisations. Battlefield 1 had almost no progression from the start, apart from your soldier rank which is really just collecting XP. A glitch on day one meant that many players unlocked all the weapons in the game much faster than intended and they got to the level 10 weapons almost instantly, which were supposed to be end game weapons according to developers at the time. I remember getting two class level 10 weapons on day one, so I got to the end of the progression tree in less than 10 hours. The new medal system, that was broken as well, it wasn't tracking things properly and limiting players quite significantly in their progression through the game. Medals are still to this day randomly generated each week and there are still medals I'm yet to complete because they just never show up for me. At launch, there was no ribbon system and that had been present in previous titles, there was no community missions feature and no clear challenge system to keep players engaged. The only thing I could point out as progression would be the battle pack system, but at the time battle packs were handed out at random at the end of matches, there was no way that you could guarantee one. That has since changed however. And as for specialisations and of course their brother's afflictions, I still don't think they're worthy progression items in Battlefield 1. They focus too much on the lone wolf style of gameplay and some of the unlock assignments are reflective of that as well. I see them as more side progression and I think that's inflated by their introduction with the second DLC for the game, it took them nearly 11 months to arrive into Battlefield 1. The game suffered greatly in the progression department and when some elements did finally arrive it was too little, too late for most players. They they'd already moved on to other titles or gone back to Battlefield 4. And lastly, number 7 on my list, I feel the communication of what's actually going on with Battlefield 1 could have been far, far better. I've spoken about this countless times before, but I feel that the speed of communication and the amount of communication just wasn't up to standard. New features would be enabled in-game and for a while after launch, nothing in the game UI told players that those new features were actually there. There was a heavy reliance on social media, but that will only get you so far with your information spreading through the community and of course not every gamer uses social media to get their game updates. The Battlefield website I think is not effectively laid out for players to easily access the information they need. A good example is the patch notes, they're hidden in the top right hand corner of the news page. I think patch notes need their own directory right at the top of the website. And the calendar page is not sorted in date order either, with tiles just spread all over the page giving information about events and in-game activities that have already happened. Surely they should disappear off the page if they're no longer relevant. I think the whole website needs to be redesigned to make it so players can easily go there and get the information they need, but one step further, 
every player who wants to play Battlefield 1, they have to go through that front-end menu system that was built for this game. That's where all the information about new features, updates and news needs to be hosted. There is now a splash screen system in place to alert players to new things, and that's great, but past that there's really not much reminding players of what's going on in the Battlefield community. Wow, that turned into rather a long video. I think we're nearly at 15 minutes. Those are just my thoughts, but I want to know what are your thoughts? Leave them down below in the comments section today and I'll be down there getting into the conversation. And as I said at the start of the video, next week I'll post the opposite side to this argument, things that Battlefield 1 did right. So if you guys have any suggestions there too, drop them down in the comments and I'll see what I can do for the next episode. But thank you very much for watching today and until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.